And then you screw it up. Anyway, so I feel like a lemon now. Yeah. Um, um, ladies and gentlemen, 8.1 graphing quadratics of y equals ax squared. Well, uh, a lot of this is going to be familiar. Guess, uh, guess what you call this line that splits the the shape right down the middle. <laughs> What's that called? No, you don't. Uh, I do it. I guess not really. You would already say it. No, I know it. Atlas. Now, is that the line of reflection? Is it like the so, axis? Yeah, it is. It is the line of reflection. What does start with? Start with the Yeah, we call it the axis of oh, symmetry. Oh, really? I said it. Oh, I'm yeah. smart. All right, all right. That's great. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it's your axis of symmetry. Or you can call it your line of symmetry. But yeah, it's it, it's what Wayne was saying. Like, it's... You can reflect it onto itself and it'll match up. Um, well, and let me back things up a little bit. Uh, no, 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 I'm not going to back things up. Uh, we also have a special coordinate right here that happens to be on the axis of symmetry, right? Now, with absolute value graphs, where we had the V shape, this coordinate had the same name. Do you remember what that's called? Yeah, it's the vertex. It's the vertex. And in this particular case, what's uh, the location of our vertex? Uh, negative. Two, negative. Two, negative. Two, negative three. Two, negative three. Oh, and our axis of symmetry was, since it's uh, a vertical line, it's just x equals what? Two. Two. X equals two. Okay. So now th this should this should all be a little familiar, a little bit familiar. Oh, um, it turns out um, graphs of quadratic functions are called parabolas. Graphs of quadratic functions are called parabolas. And um, I know that uh, we've probably talked about this. Have I talked about how gravity can be modeled by quadratic? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, keep in mind, like gravity, right? Well, watch the shape. Guess what shape that is? Parabola. It's like parabola. But, but more specifically, it's parabola. It turns out the arch, like in St. Louis, it looks like a parabola, but it's actually something else mathematically. That's a little bit different. Yeah. But they're, um, it's, it's parabolas, so these are pretty important. Um, now that we're getting into graphing, Emma, now that we're getting into graphing, we're going to have to start thinking about domain and range again as well. Yay. So let's start thinking about it. What's the domain for this graph? All real numbers. numbers. All real numbers. Now, um, i got to stress, that's not always the case in, 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 math, in math. There are some things that it's not all real numbers. But you can look at these endpoints and see how um, it looks like they're going up, but aren't they also going outward still? Mm -hmm. yeah. And that will happen forever, forever. It will get steeper and steeper. Now, um, so our domain is our set of inputs, all real numbers. What's our range in this example? Uh, y is greater than, 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 than or negative three. Y is greater than three. So range is talking about the outputs or our y values. And what's our smallest y value? Negative, negative three. three. Yeah. And can we be negative three? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah we sure can. So it's going to be y is greater than or equal to negative three. Um, also, you could ask a question here. Um, sometimes people, now don't let these arrows mislead you. Um, somebody might ask, uh, over what part of the graph are the y values increasing or decreasing? And you're always going to be thinking about, like, basically, like riding a roller coaster from left to right. 
what are we doing on the roller coaster right now? Going down. We're decreasing. So the y values are decreasing. But once we hit the vertex, what starts happening? Increase. The y values increase. So sometimes there's questions about like what interval are you decreasing? What interval are you increasing? And I think that kind of kind of makes sense. Okay, so here's what's in our future. You don't have to write this down, but in our future is we're going to be doing more complex ones where there's still quadratics, but we're going to have a lot more stuff going on. Okay, so today we're just learning the most basic of the most basic quadratics, and another name for the most basic quadratic is a parent graph. Yeah. And I think we talked about parent graphs with uh, absolute value, I think. Yeah. So um, anytime you're graphing something that you've never graphed before, what should you do? Decimals. Yeah, maybe decimals. <laughs> but let's say it's on like an old, like on the ACT where they don't let you use make decimals. A table. Make a table of values. Yeah, make a table of values. And so let's do that. Let's do, uh, oh, what's our standby? Negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. You got it. Negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And let's just punch those numbers in and see what the, the outputs are. Um, do you agree that the negative is going to be squared as well as the two? Mm -hmm. You guys cool with that? So uh, we put in negative two into this function. What do we get out? Four. Four. We put in a negative one into this function. What do we get out? Put in a zero. Zero. Yeah, put in a one. Okay, put in a two. We're back at four, aren't we? So now let's plot these points and see what this thing looks like. So we go negative two up four. Negative one up one. Zero, zero, one, one, two, four. Okay, now here's the deal. It looks, you might think it comes to like a point. It doesn't actually, because what happens is it goes steeper to the left, but as you get closer to the, to the, the vertex, guess what it does? It gets less and less steep, and so it actually kind of flattens out. But then when you cross over, it will get um, steeper again. And on this graph, what was our vertex? Zero, zero. Zero, zero. So it turns out on a parent graph, and by the way, parent graphs are not shifted. There's no shift involved. So your vertex is going to be at zero, zero if there's no shift involved. Um, and then what's our axis of symmetry here? Zero. 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 And, and be clear that it's x equals zero. That's the equation of this line, isn't it? Do we always have to identify the axis of symmetry? Oh, I mean, not, not always, but I, I'm probably going to do it most every time just so we get the practice of it. Okay. Um, well, what else should we talk about? Domain range. Oh yeah, domain range. What's our domain? All real numbers. numbers. All real numbers. Do you guys see how there's no restriction on what we put in for X here? We yeah. put every one in there. By the way, that's not always true. If we have this function, don't write this down, but we're just talking here. If you had that function, that domain is not all real numbers. You know why? Because the x is on the bottom. Because x is on the bottom, which means what number can you not use? Negative. What are you not allowed to divide? Zero. zero. One. You can divide by one. Zero. Zero. Three. Zero. zero. Isn't one divided by zero like error in your calculator? Mm -hmm. yeah. So just a heads up, in algebra two, you're going to learn that, oh, wait a second, it's not all real. I could be anything but zero. So it's kind of an, an interesting idea here. Okay, domain is all real numbers. What's our range? Y is greater than or equal to zero. Greater than or equal to zero. I dig it. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's do another one. It says, oh, do we go to lunch soon? Uh, lunch is at 11.28. You should go to lunch like right now. Enjoy your lunch. I've never studied.